When I was 15, I worked in my dad's office, and on the first day, I broke the postal scales, right, by trying to weigh uh, water. I was trying to see how much water weighs. And I learned two very valuable lessons that day, right? One, uh, four liters of water equals four kilograms, and that's too much for a scales. And the second thing is family business is tough. Family business is tough, which is why I empathize with the Roy family. The characters from Succession, the fourth and final season, now streaming on now every Monday. You can also catch up on the first three seasons there. Um, and don't put any water on your scales. And now on with my podcast. All right, how are you getting on? You well? You well? Um, I look kind of scruffy today. I'm wearing a Kevin Bacon, an oversized Kevin Bacon shirt. Let me tell you, sir, look at these, let me tell you about these clowns. They're a little clothing company. XL means different things all over the world. I like a looser fit uh, because I'm really ripped underneath, and I want it to be. Uh, I want people to be like, "Oh, what's he got under that shirt?" You know. Um, but this is a bit too XL, not like double XL, but it's too XL. I tell you what, some Magic Mike uh, double XL. I think I talked about it already. Probably one of the greatest, most enjoyable film experiences I've had, um, and like I'd say, it's better than. It goes End Game. Uh, uh, Magic Mike Double XL and um, watched SWAT the other day with my wife and it was amazing anyway move, moving on the point is I'm wearing a big scruffy shirt right and I remember being in school having my shirt untucked and them saying Tony Tony Master Cantwell they might say if they were really old if they were really old Master Cantwell um, what are you doing with that shirt uh, well, you took that in they'd say and they said, when you go to your, when you actually go and work in your job, you know, you're going to have to be on time, one, and you're going to have to tuck in your shirt. I said, hey, tuck this up your arse, I says, flipping them two birds, you know, you know. And, um, but they were wrong. They were so wrong because I arrived late to, here today to record this and I look like shit. <laughs> well, I don't look like shit, but I definitely, though, this this uh, extra large Kevin Bacon tea from the River Wild. Maybe you've seen it. Maybe you heard of it. Uh, you know, it's not exact. It doesn't exactly scream formal, but that's the thing. They weren't. They, if I could have, like, do you ever see it in a movie where, um, you know, I don't know if there's, this seems to be like a trope where there might be, like, maybe Rogue the Mutant. You know, the way sometimes you might, like, touch someone's skin and then, like, have a flash of their memories, or someone might, you know, touch someone and get a flash of the future, get a premonition, and they're like, it's too much to comprehend. They're like, <laughs> you know, I'd say if I were to show one of those moon shores, um, my life now, they'd probably be like, ha, 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 ha. they wouldn't understand it. They'd be like, what's going on? Why is he talking into a magic screen and making a living off it? Because you don't know how to encourage a creative youth. <laughs> um, anyway, who's texting me? I thought, on, I thought I had us on Do Not Disturb. Sorry, just the uh, the in-laws WhatsApp group and absolutely rinsed my wife because she didn't let me eat one of her fancy chocolates. So I gave out of her uh, to the group, you know, turned her family against her. Anyway, look, listen, Liv, how are you doing? Speaking of the in-laws, tell you what I did the other day. Made me feel like, I'm trying to find a word that is not like, made me feel like a man, you know? Um, I'm trying to look like for the catch all two things I'm trying to look for right one is um, I like saying man you know or brother um, and saying you know like thanks brother thanks man dude and I don't want to have a good feminine or uh, gender neutral one you know unless I go the full Ian McKellen thing and just say love if only more people call each other love you know where a grown man will call another man love did you see that video he's crying with John Bishop um John Bishop? I think so. Anyway, um, so that's one thing I'm looking for. A gender neutral throwaway man. You know? Because I don't like saying, you know, yeah, I don't like saying it with, with ladies. I want to have one ladies to have a good one and, and envies to have a good one, you know? Anyway, what else? What was I saying? And how did I get onto this? Threw myself off now thinking about Ian McCallum crying. Um, yes, I'm looking for a word. That kind of signifies feeling like a man. <laughs> the old stereotypes being a man. Because it's a manly shit. But I, I'm looking for the, what's the word. I did some. Because it's a mix of DIY and some dirty work. I'll tell you all about it. Uh, over the weekend. Um, actually during the week. Because this is my real job. A moon chore. A moon chore. 
I'll ask ChatGPT, what is a gender-free adjective to describe activities such as taking at the bins, doing DIY, etc., that would usually be a word like masculine or manly? Let's see what it says. Um, if it's just one word, it should come back fairly sharpish. Um, practical. The best, the best gender-free adjective to, to describe activities such as taking at the bins and DIY is practical. It's not very sexy, though. I don't aspire to be practical. I aspire to be a man! <laughs> but also like a woman. I don't aspire to be a woman. That's a lie. You know? I keep getting things popping up on my feed, stuff like, you know, um, there's a war against masculinity. And I'm like, what, make, what about this shit? What about me looking up uh, following Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle collectors on Instagram makes me makes you think in the algorithm that I'm at war with masculinity? <laughs> you know, what about me complimenting um, doting heart eyes on everyone, uh, you know, when I react to someone's picture of a baby, even though there needs to be a different emoji for like a ba- like a cute baby? I can't keep using the heart eyes emoji. You know, you're like, obviously you get like a quick little emoji comment on someone's Instagram stories and you just hit the heart eyes, you know. But then you'll also do that for someone with a pretty good fit. Maybe like they're looking good that day or maybe they're getting glammed up, dolled out on their way out and you hit the little heart eye emoji. Um, there needs to be one just for babies because I'm, I'm not going to lie. I kind of do a little wince. I'm like, I hit that and I'm like, oh, fuck, I hope, don't, I hope they don't think, you know, hope I don't get reported for that. Do you know what I mean? We have the evidence here, sir. He uh, he had lust, and then they look into the code, and they realize that that, <laughs> that Instagram emoji is codenamed Lust Eyes. I'm like, I didn't know it was Lust Eyes. I just thought it looked adorable. I am not a pedo. <gasps> you know me, Judge. You know me. I have never met you before in my life. You know me. <laughs> you know I'm not a nuns. I can't believe this happened to me. What happened to your voice, Tony? I don't know. The mask is slipping. Not P- not pedo. Um, how do I get onto that? Um, anyway, yeah, practical. Not a cool word. What about magic? No. Um, it's, I it wanted to be masculine, you know. But you know, the only the only reason. That there are that I, I'm kind of subjugating my wife a little bit with the masculine jobs. I refuse to let her build any flat pack furniture. I refuse outright. You know, she tries to take out the bin. I slap it from her dainty fingers. I say, "How dare you?" I say, "That's my job, right? That's my dirty job, being a dirty boy." <laughs> I say to my wife, "You know." So Terry would do probably all these things if I let her, but I am I'm the one holding on to this masculine idea. <laughs> Whatever. Shut up. Shut up. Move on. Um. Anyway, my jobs included to build a shed. <laughs> it said on a bar. I went a home base. Um. First, I went in there. I bought a ladder, a telescopic ladder, right? And uh, it said it was two hundred. Uh, it said it was like one hundred and fifty pounds. Now that's sterling now. Um. But on the home base UK thing. And then I went in, it was 220 euro. Did the conversion. Something didn't add up, right? Brought it up to the till. And I'm like, there you go. It says on the website 150. And I obviously saw the pun, the pound sign. It says there are 150 on the website, so that's all I'm going to pay for it. I didn't say that part, but I said, oh, it says 150 on the website. Hmm. You know, hoping that behind the till is an actual baby, you know? Hoping behind the till is a monkey with a headset on banging the keyboard with a hammer. That's the that's the level of respect I show this woman by being so fucking cheeky, you know? The, the playing to, like, just... Not even assuming someone's so stupid, but, I mean, that's a little, that's a little mini scam I did there, you know? Because I saw the price. I saw the price and I said, no way. And I said, no way, you know? And then they're like, oh, that's the pound price. And I was like, oh, oh, but even if you change it over, that wouldn't really be that, that price in euro. And I'm like, what's she going to do? What's she going to do? Take this to the higher ups? What is she going to do? Is she going to be like, guys, guys, there's a discrepancy. There's a currency discrepancy. You know, she didn't give a fuck. So, um, so I ended up paying it and I was sitting there in the car and I was like, that's too much now for a telescopic ladder. That's too much. I was sitting there in the car like stewing. 
and eventually I returned it and I swapped it ah, for a shed, big plastic shed. And um, so I got this big plastic shed um, and here was my more, more fool me building the shed in the back garden. Right. And in fact, that's where I got this little um, stigmata. Padre Pedo over here. I might call myself a pedo all the time. I'm not. Um, the Padre Pio uh, stigmata hand, you know. Um, people were so stupid back then. Imagine just cutting your hand and your feet, foot every day and being like, "I'm al- I'm also Jesus." Oh, we must put his picture on cars. He is amazing. You know, that's what they were doing back then. And all these like every night, like, Doom! you know, well worth it. Sorry, how many Nissan micros am I going to be on? <laughs> Absolutely. If I knew that all I had to do was just cut my hand every day to be on a, a, a bunch of Nissan Micros, oh my God, that that's just that's a level of exposure that you just can't get these days. Is to be on a car. I used to my my, my has Nissan Micro. There used to be a no smoking sticker on it. My mom be puffing away. You, hey, are we uh, are we on uh, the Skelligs? Because there's a fucking puffing sitting up the front seat. <laughs> you know, puffing away, and. You know, Carly, you know, it says no smoking here. Ma, be like, yeah, it's the old, it's the old owners. That's the old owners. I haven't taken it off you. You know, but I used to stare at that sticker. I was talking about this before, the kind of real estate sticker, real estate. The sticker, the smash hit stickers. You had a Jerry Halliwell on your headboard. (laughs) The Casper, the friendly ghost stickers that you'd have, you know, Tony, the Tiger, whatever you had. Just this real estate. You'd just be constantly staring at, you know. Um, Why was I talking about this? Because Padre Pio, yeah, manly shit. Screwdriver. <clears throat> Should have. Sorry, I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> and I dab when I sneeze. We're looking cute. We're looking cute. You might even send me a pedo emoji. I was looking so cute there. Um, But anyway, what the fuck? Um, I'm not swearing. Yeah, so I was, so I had, so it, it had on the, it had on the outside of this thing. So I bought this, a, a plastic shed because I'm turning the, the brick shed into my my home personal office gym gaming room tiki bar snug S- did i say studio six and one and don't skimp on the chili chicken all right six and one that's what i'm turning my shed into so i had to put all the stuff that would go in there into a different shed and it's all plastic right and it says on the outside it's going to take you 25 minutes reader <laughs> reader um, try three hours it took me putting this thing together and it said you don't need a hammer and you don't need a drill reader you need a fucking drill and it said as well as it'll take about 25 minutes and like I don't know where to get I don't know where to get the gumption right there should be like a kind of a score on the outside it should say hard it should say like you know 1000 XP if you get it done in 25 minutes 500 XP if it takes you um three hours you know and 100 xp if uh it takes all day or if you don't finish you know there shouldn't be like oh it'll take you 25 minutes this should just be like you know if you did it in this time you get silver or something do you know what i mean game fire uh, and not make me feel like oh there's something wrong with me then well i guess there's something wrong because it took three hours so what i'll just fucking top myself will you because that it says 25 minutes uh, <laughs> you know it made me feel but I, I, I also know they're lying to you. Packages are always lying to you, you know. I've talked about this before, and I'll talk about it again. You go, in, you go into the shop, you get yourself a can of Heinz soup, and then you look at the back, and it says, uh, you know, the calories on it. And then you look at it, and it's like, per portion. Per portion! And then you look at it, this is a two-portion can of soup. So the iconic opening a can of soup and pouring it into a bowl action. That's been around for hundreds of years, thousands. Not maybe you can. And that's, uh, it, no, it's actually, no, you go, oh, and then you put the rest in the fridge. What do you, what are you supposed to wrap it with as well? You know, if that's so common, if it's so common that everyone's only eating half a can of soup, where are all the half cans? Half can of stuff. Anyway, um, anyway, so I pour, I didn't, I wasn't eating soup. <laughs> I wasn't eating soup So I'm putting this thing together It's a 25 minutes Reader took 3 hours uh, And I made the mistake It said roll out, roll out a carpet um, 
And I'm like, roll out a carpet. Like, but it's a shed. Don't be duping me into building a shed inside my house to then try and bump into it like a mop hit. Try to bump into the door to get a shed out. If it's if you build it in the house, it's staying in the house. I don't know how big your doors are. Right? This is a shed. And it's like, yeah, build it inside. <clears throat> Fucking idiot. Yeah, it'll take that'll be about twenty five minutes. Yeah, build it inside as well, by the way. You clim, you know? So I'm like, oh. So I built it outside in the grass. Now I'll tell you something. I could have done with a carpet. <laughs> and not because I was like, ah, I was like, I'm built on the grass. What is it, what's it to protect the shed? It's outdoors. You drop a lot of screws. If you're Tony Catwell. If you've got chubby digits like like daddy, you know? Um so I was fumbling. Fumbling these screws like I was a nervous boy, uh, holding a bra for the first time. <laughs> All falling on the ground, you know. So they were constantly falling into like little holes, and my hands were coming up mucky, and somehow cut as well. <laughs> somehow cut. My hands were coming up cut from the grass. I'm like, who the fuck's doing that? There's a little ant in there with a couple of shivs. I don't know what, how I'm getting all these cuts in my hands. Um, you know, I go camping. Like I go to, you know, if I go to an electric picnic overnight and I'm glamping after doing a gig, I somehow come back with cuts like in my mouth or something. Do you know what I mean? Anyway. So I am putting this thing together. It's taken ages. And I tell you, this is not idiot proof. This is far beyond my Allen key slot joint kind of uh, uh, practicality, right? This is, um, this is a level that I'm, I'm a bit, you know, this is, you're having to drill, s- drill screws through plastic. Now, they tell you where, but like, there's not even the hole. You have to make the hole. You make the hole needs to be idiot proof it needs to perfectly fit you know um so i'm drilling away and i'm drilling holes in it and it's not the right spot and i'm like oh well this is not waterproof anymore you know and then i'm thinking of the lie i have to tell terry being like no it never said it was waterproof on the thing it's like, actually because i drilled a load of fucking rain holes in it but i put it together um the doors don't really close but i thought you know what that's fine i'm sure that'll last 20 years you know i have to kind of like wedge the doors kind of close you know but I'm probably the only one who's going to be touching them because I'm the only practical one in the house, you know, doing all the practical jobs. So, um, no, wait, hang on. I wasn't using a screwdriver then. That was when I was building the table, I got the stigmata, right? Either way, built the shit, right? And um, what was the point I was going to make about it? Anyway, it's full of shit. Anyway, this shit. It's it's full. I don't know. I know. I'm already, I already know that my, I don't want to say man cave, my practical cave, where I do practical shit, is going to be full of all this shit. Terry's going to be, can we just keep the iron board in there? And I'm like, no! What if I have the lance over? And look at the fucking iron board. You know? And i tell you what, my new shed is full of paint. Because everyone's like, oh, make sure you keep the paint. Oh, well, you might need some touch-ups. And we do need some touch-ups. Um, you might need some touch-ups. You might need to color correct. Don't, don't get rid of your paint. Honestly, do not get rid of your paint. I don't think I'm going to regret getting rid of my paint. I had to get this shed just to sort of some fucking paint. I was going to put it in the attic. And they're like, oh, what if it spills? What if it gets the heat? You know, paint spoils in the heat. It's flammable. All this shit. Why am I storing paint when my Game Boy's gone, right? Let me, this is a list of things that I wish I had that are somehow gone. Someone else has, right? I've had every console there is. I've had Game Boy, Sega Mega Drive, um, Sega Dreamcast. I've had uh, a SNES. I've had an N64. I've had a GameCube. I've had a PSP, I had a PSP Vita, I had a PlayStation 1, 2, 3, 4, right? I have had uh, Xbox One, Xbox 360, right? They're all gone! Where's my WWF No Mercy, right? Where's my original gold uh, Ocarina of Time cartridge, right? Where's my four disc Final Fantasy 7? They're all gone! Some kid has them. Where's all my wrestlers? Where's my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles truck? It's just gone. That's gone. All of that would have fit in this shed. And I'm holding on to fucking paint. Anyway, so so that was the first manly thing I did that day. The second manly thing, practical thing I did was got a call. Got a call about a dirty job. Get a call from, from the mother-in-law. There's half a dead cat in the back garden. Can Tony get rid of it? I had to get rid of a fucking dead cat. There's half a dead cat in the back garden of my mother-in-law's. And 
It was a half a cat. I went around to pick up my young fella. Um, she was looking after him during during the day. Um, and so I went down the back garden. And sure enough, half a fucking cat. Body. Well, torso, half a torso, legs, and a tail. And I've looked into enough cryptid attacks that um, attacks from monsters, you know. Um, do you know what I? Do you know what I say to my son, which I really like. This is one of mine. I said, um, he's like our monster. You know, you talk about monsters sometimes and dragons and stuff. And I'm like, you know what, son? Monsters aren't scary. Monsters are just animals that we haven't found yet. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice what I came up with? Monsters are just animals we haven't found yet. You know? Um, I mean, I think technically that is already borrowed from the cryptozoology community, but whatever, it's mine as well. So anyway, that was the first. But anyway, this was a, this was no fox. I sat down, put my, my um, autopsy gloves on, did a little um did a little uh police cordoned off area in the back garden, wondering I was like, what the fuck's he doing? And he's like, just if he's gonna get rid of the cat, let him get into it, right? And I'm like, okay, we got a feline male, a feline female. Um I didn't really check. I didn't check the if the <laughs> I didn't check if the pussy had a puss. What are you laughing about? This is a dead cat. What are you laughing about? It's awful. Subject is female, African American. It was a black, black cat, um, white paws, um, and uh, appears to have been um, signs of struggle. It was hair everywhere, hair everywhere, um, and uh, appears to be a half a cat. I don't know what the kind of technical term. It's been definitely been decapitated. But what's it called when you take the whole top of the body off? That's what happened to this cat. And I have never seen a fox do this. This was no fox. This was a beast. Um, this was some fierce beast um, that could still be roaming out there. And I had a little, um, so I did a little walk around the perimeter and I saw there was a hole. And I'm like, oh, fuck, mole people. The subterraneans are coming up here. They've had enough of it down there. And they're coming up here and their mouths are big enough to eat ah, a cat in half. If anyone can do maybe a police sketch for me, if you're an artist and you can maybe, this is my description based on what I've seen here. Shark headed mole man. Do with you, do what, do with that what you will. And then hopefully we can put an APB out on this clown. Shut this guy down once and for all because he took a whole bite out of this cat. I mean, maybe it was, you know, maybe it could have been a fox that like bit it and then like ripped it. But like, I don't know how you get to half a cat. Right, you know, half a cat. So it was it was a tough situation. So I had a look at the I had, I had it's, but I do actually do that shark mole person though. I do want to see that. Do in in the in the form of a police sketch, um, because we need to know what we're dealing with here. I'm so like I never thought I'd have to break it to the to the Irish state. You know, you know, my I, I actually next stage I'm going to go to Michael D Higgins. We have a shark mole who is eating cats in half. <laughs> Right, so you know, hug your kids, unlock your fucking windows because they're coming. The terrifying thing though is when I arrived at the gaff to get rid of the cat. Um, the mother-in-law, um, I I, I showed her the mother-in-law the bag that I had. She's like, bring a black sack, and I was like, and I was like, she told me it was maybe it might be a cat, but she didn't really want to look at it, right? But I arrived with a big super value bag, and I mean like you know, big like Matt Damon bag, you know. So that's going to be enough, you know. Um, and then arrived at that and she's like, that bag's not going to be big enough. I was like, Jesus. And I got, I got really scared. <laughs> Turned out it was big enough. But that scared me when she said that, you know. I'm like, what the fuck did he do? Is it a horse? Did a horse break in and then something bigger than a horse eat the horse? Is that my first thought, <laughs> you know. Like, what is going on in the back garden? I didn't want to go out there. But then I went out and I was, you know, it was a cat and I put it in the bag. Um, and then afterwards he was like, oh, do you want some marigolds? And I'm like, like I would have been handy a while ago <laughs> before I picked it up. Did the old inside out bag, you know, 
and then give it a I tell you those handles good for tying up the corpse of a cat you know not tying it up but like closing the back you know if you got a cat corpse in there and then just put it into a wheelie bin you know so I was riding high on being you know a freelance um, uh, shed builder slash forensic cleanup artist throw an artist at the end of that and I was riding high in that feeling real practical about myself you know and then I was outside trying to get rid of some boxes and um, I cut my finger with a scissors. Not only did I cut my finger with a scissors, I don't know what I was thinking. I pressed down, the scissors were open. <laughs> the scissors were open and I pressed down on the blade to use the blunt end to open a box. To be like, and I was like, Whoa. <laughs> what the fuck was that? And I cut my finger open really bad and I was trying to play it cool. But Terry knew. Terry knows when I'm being real quiet. I went quiet for a while because I'm always chatting shy. So she's like, you all right? And there's like blood running down my head in the sink. And I'm like, yeah, I think I'm all right. And she goes, you all right? And I'm like, no, I like, kind of cut my finger a little bit. And like, if I cut my finger, I wouldn't, you know, tell her. But if it was really bad, she goes, oh, no. She came around and put it. And she was kind of, we were kind of fighting with each other. So it was kind of a weird situation. She had to kind of come over and like be all Florence Nightingale with me, you know? Um, So... I kind of misunderstood that as some intimacy, went in for a kiss, and she's like, I'm still fine with you. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Okay, grand. Um, <laughs> you know, but she fixed up my finger all nice. That was ages ago, you know. And um, But I was like, oh, shit. Now I'm, um, that's kind of taking a taking a knock, not the, you know, the dodge and the kiss bit. You know, that's fine. We, you know, we just got to give each other space. But, um, you know, uh, the cut my finger or using the finger, scissors the wrong way. Kind of took a hit to my practicality, you know. And then uh, the next morning, I was on the way to the shoot with the, with the lads, and I opened the door. And you know me, I'm like freakishly strong, so like I opened the door, went boom, smashed my the door into my head, and started bleeding, bleeding, bleeding ugly. <laughs> now I start bleeding down my face, you know. I'm like, oh no. So this, so I I I'm keen. For whenever, like, they say, like, who, does anyone want to volunteer transferring their consciousness to a computer? I, even though you should never get involved in the first gen of Anton, I will be number one. I'll be number one because this body, this body doesn't work very well, okay? I may have ruined it a little bit, okay? I may have ruined it a little bit. You know, I spent five years exclusively eating fried chicken when I was living in London. That wasn't great. Before then, I spent my entire teens drinking two liter bottles of Coke every day. You know, before then, eating like kilo bags of Haribo, not really walking, not really looking after myself, you know. Uh, so, like, I, this body shot, it's also just, like, too clumsy. Or maybe I'm just a bit too advanced for this body. You know what I mean? The point I'm making is um, this body, I'm done with it. It's too clumsy. It's going to kill me one day. So whenever I'll be in the first fucking, I'll be in the number one in the queue. For when the singularity happens, being a hook me up to this Apple thing. Well, I know it's first gen and it's gonna have to get a shitload of updates, but whatever. I need out of this body. This body's gonna kill me sooner than your fucking iPod crashing my consciousness will. You know? So um so I'm looking forward to that. But I've also I I'm not gonna lie, I've had some fairly fucking didn't need to swear so hard there, transcended experiences playing VR recently. I don't know about the whole metaverse thing. But in terms of actual experiences, you know the way they say that they, you can use like ayahuasca or mushrooms or LSD to have these kind of um, like they've been good for like PTSD to and uh, and, and using uh, like MDMA as 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 a kind of an empathy tool for people who've you know for for understanding someone's kind of perspective. I think they even use VR sometimes, so you can actually understand the perspective of what someone else might have been going through in a situation. You know. I don't know about it, you know, I'm not smart enough to tell you about how it could be used for therapy or anything like that. Or maybe even couples therapy. See, from my perspective. <laughs> you know, my perspective would just be me walking around and everything going, <sighs> you know. Wow, I see it from your perspective. Um, you just nothing going on up there. Um, but anyway, I get, I, I'm talking about this because I had this transcendent experience playing this VR game called Before Your Eyes. Highly recommend it. Right, if you're lucky enough to have access to some sort of VR, you can also. It's also a mobile game, mobile game. I say mobile because I hear Americans say mobile games. Mobile game, 
for your mobile. But the, the it's, a, it's a really interesting gameplay mechanic, which is that you uh, you control it by blinking, by looking at something and blinking, and it tracks your eyes and um, or it tr- tracks your head movement. And when you're looking at something and blink, uh, you can interact with something. But the weird, interesting thing is, I'll get to the premise. You're you're dead in the afterlife, and you're floating in the water among a sea of souls. And the ferryman comes along and plucks you up and puts you in the boat and talks to you and says, all right, you're a soul. I'm going to have to bring you. And you see this big looming tower, this big, tall. And you're, oh, because it's VR, it's literally like, I can't even explain. When you, when you get to scale in the VR, you're actually looking at something and you're like, that's fucking massive. When you're playing games, you're like, you know, you know, with big fucking robots and everything, you never really like know that they're really big. Things are big, you know, when you actually get to see them firsthand in a game. Big looming tower and he's like, the overseer is going to look at your case but I need to see your life to know how to speak for you because you're kind of this floating head, you know. Uh, and so we're going to go through your life and we're going to see look, look at your moments in life and I'm going to make a case. So you go, start going back and you go back from when your very first memory. And the interesting thing is when you look at something and blink, you know, that's how you interact with something. But also every few, every few seconds, every time you blink, you skip forward. And that's a really interesting game mechanic because you could literally be in a really beautiful moment and you want to hear what someone's going to say and you're like fighting your eyes to keep them open, but you just can't and you blink. And it's this really interesting way of looking at just how transient everything is and how just things move and you can't hold on, you know. And it's a game that will require a lot of playthroughs. But what's really interesting is because you start from your very first memory, you're just staring out at the sea and your mother's talking to you and you can't even see her. Because she's, she, you know, but with 3D audio, you just you're hearing her over here and she's just talking to you. It's like, oh, what a beautiful day we're going to have. And then you're sitting on the sand and you're looking at a seagull and a seagull steals one of the pages of your mass, uh, kind of she's making notations. She's a composer, you know. And then you're in the bath and you're like looking at a little tugboat and you're like looking at the tugboat pop all the bubbles. And it is like, it's like, I'm, I actually feel like, you actually feel like you're a kid because it's, because it is really interesting. It's kind of amazing because you're in VR. When you're a kid, everything's amazing. So it kind of plays on the fact that you're doing things just by, like things are just happening and just staring at things, you know? You're just sitting there staring at things and it's amazing. And then you're like looking at the clouds and because of how your eyes are moving, the clouds are moving around and you can just see yourself as a kid. Your parents looking at you thinking, what's going on in his head? And you're just looking at a cloud that looks like the tugboat that was in your bath earlier in the day, you know? And then as you get older, you're kind of, you know, seeing things happen and your parents kind of change and then put a bit more kind of pressure on you. And you see them kind of realize that there's not much time left in life and that maybe they need to reshape who you are and you want to go a different direction. And it's just a fascinating perspective to experience. And it's all very toony and it doesn't necessarily look real. But the soundtrack is enough to really make you the emotions stir. And the voice acting is incredible. And I just really got into it. And I was playing it. And I'm like, oh, my God, like I'm in, a, I'm in a bath and it's a baby. And then Terry was kicking me. And I was like, fucking hell. Like, I forgot I was even on the couch. And I was like, what? And she goes, I like, closed the door because it was windy. And I was like, can you not see? I'm having a transcendent experience. She did have the baby asleep on top of her. But still, I'm the baby. I was actually the baby. Um, Before your eyes, I highly recommend it. Didn't get to finish it. Um, But it's only an hour and a half played about an hour of it and it was very uh, hypnotic so I highly recommend that then I jumped into Res Res is a game that you're just like you're shooting through this kind of you know uh, vector kind of style it looks like kind of Tronish and you're just kind of shooting all these like little you know um, shooting all these like weird robots and flying saucers and spaceships but you're do again doing it with your eyes. Like, dun, 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 dun. It looks like a sort of game that like would be in like the outer limits or like the next generation that the the, the crew become you know obsessed with. That's infecting your mind, you know. Um, but I'm all for that. I'm all for that shit. But again, I tell you, I plead with you, Rockstar Games, never make a VR GTA. Never make it. I don't want to see my hands, my hands, do what I will do in that game. That should never happen. But anyway, look, I've been chatting for a while. Um, thanks very much for listening to this pod. Thanks again to No, sponsor of this pod. Do watch the last and fourth season of Succession. You can catch up over on now as well. And look, if you like this pod, you know I do these pods as well in video 
over on the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tony Campbell, where every single Friday there's a bonus podcast. Um, the most recent one I did, um, I was talking about um, identifying bad habits and how to overcome them. Well, I identify one bad habit that I have and how I overcame it. Well, actually, I didn't. How I gave into it. But recognizing them is important. Anyway, it's not exactly self-help, but it's me chatting shite, and it's a lot more personal over there on the Patreon. So if you like that, for the price of a pint, or maybe even a deli roll these days, uh, Fiverr a month, you can get four podcasts uh, a month, every Friday. Also, you get access to early bird tickets for any and all gigs that I book myself, that I put on myself. You have a day's advanced access for any of those gigs there's always there's always a pre-sale link and there's going to be a lot more live podcasts there's also going to be a live event at the eurovision which actually will probably be on sale next week uh probably this week yeah this week it should hopefully be on sale uh, a live event eurovision watch along we're watching the eurovision i'm getting to live my terry wogan graham norton fantasy i'm going to have some guests on we're going to be watching the eurovision giving our two cents on every act on the live date and that's going to be um on the night of the eurovision and place TBC I mean it is confirmed but I just uh, I don't know about announcing these things before they're actually on sale you know and then also the Bureau de Change song contest the night before on the Friday we're doing it again every comedian's going to pick a country and then we're going to perform as that country to a public vote and that's going to be in the Liberty Hall Theatre and that's going to be on Friday the 12th of May tickets as well to be on sale probably this week or maybe next week Ooh. but anyway I'm shouting on Thank you very much for listening to this pod, watching this pod. And if you could like this, and if you could leave a review, if you could leave a review on Apple Podcasts, if you could uh, rate this podcast on Spotify, and if you could also like, subscribe, and comment in this uh, YouTube video, it would really help me boost my numbers and keep me doing this full-time. So thank you very much. All the best. Bye-bye.